Um, all right, let's get on with the program. Let's talk about uh, California Senator Kamala Harris was chosen as Joe Biden's running mate this past week. They are both the presumptive nominee for president and vice president. And we want to give you a look at her uh, record, but we want to start with her bio points and just hit some bio points. Now, we are going to do, because by virtue of time, we're going to do uh, a gloss over of much of this. But if you want to go deeper on any singular point, we have uh, seven pages of show notes. There isn't a, a podcast out there, let alone a libertarian podcast, in my opinion, that gives you as much sources of where we find our information because in this day and age, when you don't know what to trust and believe, we try to show our work so then you can go back and look for yourself. But if you have more interest in learning about a specific bullet point that we're talking about through this episode, you can always go to wearelibertarians.com or in the description of the podcast on your podcast catcher and grab the PDF and check out our show notes. Uh, once again, thanks to Hody John. So Senator Kam Kamala, Kamala Harris, that's what I'm going with. Kamala Harris, I have trouble with anybody's name in general, uh, so I apologize. Born in 1964 in Oakland, California, she was born to an Indian mother who was a breast cancer scientist, and, and they immigrated here to go to uh, specifically Berkeley, where they eventually ended up teaching. Her father was a Jamaican and a professor of economics at Berkeley, uh, obviously very intelligent parents, and they were, uh, they grew up, now, some of the stuff that we're going to talk about, I'm only talking about because other people are talking about it. In my general opinion, Reinhold, uh, if you're talking about her sexual history or her race, I think it's cretinous. I think it's generally gross, and I think it's counterproductive for convincing people to your side. What say you? I uh, agree completely, and I think it's it's usually a sign of, A, they don't have anything else to talk about, which isn't true in this case, or that's just where their mind is. That that's the type of things that are at the front of their minds. Yeah. You know, it, do you hear that sort of thing? So we talk about, you know, we hear people talking about uh, Kamala and, and her boss, but how much do we talk about, you know, Trump and, and all of the stuff that he's gone through and all the sexual exploits and blah, 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 blah. And, the same people who are going to attack her on this are going to defend him on all of his activities. And it's almost like it's because she's a woman trying to be in the position of power. I'm sure there's, I'm with. sure there's an element of that. And I just think that it's also an element of the right, specifically the, the former Tea party, which I learned this week still exists here in Indiana. Somehow <laughs> uh, they talk apparently a lot about QAnon, according to a friend. Um, but there is – it goes back to the book Richard Hofstetter's Paranoid Style in American Politics. Jesse Walker wrote a book on conspiracy theories that kind of talks a lot about this mindset. You know, every Democrat that runs for national office isn't a citizen. John McCain wasn't a citizen. You know, uh, you know Obama wasn't a quote-unquote real African-American. You know, as if they're qualified, Lily White – Republicans in, <laughs> in tea parties are qualified to make that determination and they're doing it. They're doing a lot of the, they're, they're breaking out some of the greatest hits of the birther movement on uh, Senator Harris. So that's why we want to address it because other people are talking about it. And when they talk about it, we want you to understand what they're saying and why, and here's the facts. Uh, but I generally think there's plenty in her record and it's the same with Joe Biden and the sniffing stuff. Like there's plenty, I'll share the memes because they're funny, but there's plenty in his record that is grotesque as evidenced by a previous episode that you can make the case on, you know, it's, it's like, mm -hmm. uh, you can make the case for government shutdowns, not being appropriate without being a total conspiracy nut on COVID being a hoax. Uh, it's just it's it all kind of falls into that paranoid style in American politics. So, um, you know, for what it's worth, she did grow up in a black part of Oakland in the 60s and 70s. She was born in 64. Uh, it, she grew up in specifically Berkeley, where she was a participant in busing to a northern part of Berkeley, a more uh, affluent part of town. And in that busing, uh, she where she was a part of it. The school went from 
95% white to 40% black. Uh, and so that is the, the moment that when people say that uh, she called Biden a racist, she didn't call him a racist. She said that he was palling around with segregationists and supported policies that that hurt black people like her in that debate. So uh, you can find and, out. And Go ahead. And that's a similar thing that we have with a lot of somewhat tangential groups to the alt-right that we have in uh, different movements where they may not be racists, but they tend to spend time defending or uh, working with racists an awful lot. Yeah. Uh, it, right. And so she didn't specifically call him a racist, but, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, the implication was clear. She said she stood with the women, you know, she and then now she's changed her mind. So she meant it or she didn't. Um, so while she also grew up going to black Baptist churches and Hindu temples. Now, while her parents were not citizens at her birth, she was born in America and it makes her a natural born citizen and eligible to be president. Uh, the the right is going to have so much fun, Reinhold, with the concept of her being a quote unquote anchor baby. Uh, well, but she is eligible to be president because she was born here. And uh, we linked an article from Reason that talked about why the, the founders felt that if you were born within American territory, you can be president. Right. And the so. I've had a conversations with some people who are trying to like overly document some discussions that were made back in the day when they were writing the constitution and how they really meant this and they really meant that. But the preponderance of the, of the history of, and the documentation of what that stuff means, the common law, the, the, uh, the adjudication of it is that if you're born here, you're a natural born citizen. So it comes down to the problem that natural born citizen is used in the constitution but it is not defined in the constitution. So then people right. have to define what that means. And there are people now trying to make the case that in order to be a natural born citizen, you have to be born in the United States and both of your parents have to be citizens, right? At the time of your birth, which eliminates like six presidents that we've had <laughs> from being <laughs> president. So it's like, standard, yeah, yeah. It, so, you, you know, I think the history shows that that's not the case but they're still going to try and make the case. And it's, it's similar to the, the right trying to make the, the argument on, um, on the case of citizenship, um, uh, you know, the anchor ba baby stuff and things like that, where we have an amendment that was discussed and talked about, and they knew exactly what they were voting for when they voted for that. They right. knew they were voting for a case of when they passed it, that, if you were born here, you were a citizen, you know, straight out. There was no equivocation of it. Uh, the only equivocation was something to do with, with the Indian tribes because technically they had different, they were sovereign, you know, countries within our country. So there were some going back and forth on that technicality of it. But for everybody else, um, that was not, that was the case. If you were born here, you were a, a U.S. citizen. So, um, but they still want to try and make the case. They still want to push that argument because they're trying to re, you know, re adjudicate this whole mess um, for their own purposes, for own political purposes. So, I mean, that's, that's what they do. So we, now, we just keep having to have this argument over and over and yeah. over again. And it gets tiresome. Sometimes. It's like local politics here in Indiana. We constantly have the residency fight. Like it's, you know, Evan Bayer or Dick Luger or whomever. And it's always, you know, from the right. And it's like, it never has worked. It never will work. It just makes you look like you're lazy. It's sort of libertarian sort of do the thing with debates where it's like, they're scared to debate me. No, they're not. They're not even <laughs> thinking about you in any way, shape or form. They don't want you involved because they don't think about you and they don't think you're relevant like it, they're not well, they don't want they don't want you to take the air out of the conversation that they're trying to have too so the debates are for the two the two people who actually can win so that they can get their message out and if a third person's up there taking time away who has no chance to win that's why they don't want them up there it's not because right. they're worried about oh they're going to make me look bad no, they, they don't they don't think that so uh so some of the maga crowd are highlighting an ancestor that owns slaves this is true uh 
an Irish born grandfather in Jamaica. Her great, 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 great grandfather was a slave owner. And it is likely that her great, 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 great grandmother was one of those slaves and was raped as often happened. And that her, uh, her ancestors, her great, great, great grandfather, I think was Mm -hmm. grandfather. Mother was uh, a product of slave rape. So continue pushing that line. There's no- um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out the relevance, but they can, keep, they can keep talking about it all they want. Cause I, don't, I think that only kind of adds to the arguments that a lot of people on the left have been trying to make for, for centuries. So it's the, the whole, it's the hypocrisy of it. It's yeah. whatever. So Harris attended Howard university in DC and graduated in poli sci and econ And she went on to the University of California for her law degree and was admitted to the California bar in 1990. Now, this is when her early career begins, and she began her career as a prosecutor as a deputy district attorney in Alameda County. We're talking about uh, Senator Kamala Harris, who is now the running mate of Vice President Joe Biden. And in 1994, this is the Willie Brown stuff um, in you may see your Facebook friends basically say, oh, she slept her way to the top. So here's what, they, what they're what they talking about. These, these are just the facts according to everybody involved. 1994, Cal- California Assembly Speaker Willie Brown uh, appointed Harris to the State Unemployment Insurance Appeals Board and later the California Medical Assistance Commission. Harris took a leave of absence from her prosecutor job in Alameda County to serve in those positions. Willie Brown was a kingmaker. As we said, he was the head of the California Assembly at the time. And she was 30. He was in his mid-60s. And he was married. And it was obviously an open secret uh, that they were dating. Now, in those positions, on those two patronage positions that she got... Uh, she made over 400,000 in those positions. In one case, uh, I believe it was the um, Unemployment Insurance Appeals Board. She was paid like $999,000, which in today's money is $150,000. And she only came to two meetings. Um, Now, their relationship ended and he returned to his wife and they remained friendly. Uh, he convinced L.A. Mayor Via Ragosa to stay out of the Senate race when she ran, for instance. Uh, and by all accounts, you know, this was a consensual relationship. He was having marital issues. He has confirmed that this relationship took place. Um, you know, it uh, it for a person who runs on fighting corruption, it obviously looks bad, um, but. Not one person who criticizes that relationship. It's an easy thing to criticize, and it's been a constant criticism in her career. But who knows the nature of that relationship? They dated for months, so I'm sure that it was not just a relationship of convenience. There was probably feelings there. I mean, I think it's it's kind of ugly just to dismiss it as what it is, but it obviously doesn't look great if you're, you know, trying to... To, to run as an anti-corruption candidate. What do you think, Reinhold? Well, the question is, was she trying to run as an anti-corruption candidate while this was going on, or did she maybe learn from that? I mean, there's, how can you judge that sort of thing? You know, it, it, it's not like she didn't have things that she was bringing to the table that made her qualified for what position she was getting. She was already a rising star right. in a prosecutor's and, office. You know, she, she had chops. And, and how many jobs were given out for for patronage, but that has nothing to do with sex, right? I mean, it has nothing to do with with that sort of thing. It's just you're friend. friendly with someone. You know somebody. Like, let's know. say you're friends with the president, and he fires everybody at the post office, and he gives you a job. What about that? Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> uh, that could be considered corruption, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> if something like that were to ever to happen, not, not that it would. I think uh, the question is, what difference does it make now? And yeah. the answer is she went on to a long career in multiple different levels and showed skill, not mm-hmm. as you'll see skill at things that we hate, but you know, it's, it's, uh, is it relevant at this point in her career? And in my opinion, it's not. Yeah. And the other thing too, is how many times do you hear about, 
a man who's slept his way to the top, right? I, I you know, I mean, I'm trying, but it's never happened. <laughs> exactly. It's like it, it's kind of like a a, a charge that's only lev- levied against uh, women trying to trying to be in power, right? So right. it's that it's that old canard where the old boys club tries to uh, do what they can to keep that from happening. Yeah. So fun fact, um, more about her relationship. She dated Montel Williams in 2001. I saw the daily mail report that with a picture of the two of them at some uh, red carpet sighting dressed in their full, it was full early two thousands fashion. It was hilarious. Um, now after this, she worked as a private attorney specializing in youth sexual abuse cases and domestic violence. As a DA, she would go on to take a less punitive approach to sex workers as a result in some cases. Uh, She would also go on to co-sponsor a law that would have banned sex offenders from social media as well as a law that imposed a curfew on them on Halloween. So um, fighting sex trafficking and uh, sexual abuse became – as you pick through her record, it's schizophrenic. And it, there is a lot, and this is why some of these, the things that we've talked about kind of hit in a certain way is because she seems very phony. And it, she'll say one thing and do another, but then she'll correct, and then she'll flip. She did this during the presidential campaign. You know, mm-hmm. she, she went f- really hard on one direction and then got pushed back and then went the exact opposite way a week later you know, trying to reposition herself as someone else. Like she, she tried to look like a full progressive and then realized Pete had that lane. And so she corrected and went the other way. And it's like, she, she gets tagged with the ambition, which we'll talk about female ambition in, in a, in a moment, but she gets tagged with that because she is so often inconsistent. And so she'll say I'm for sex workers, but then she, prosecutes them really aggressively you know so it sometimes doesn't make a lot of sense uh in in what she does so what i'm hearing is that she's a politician she is she is really truly a politician in the classic sense of it you know she's just Mm -hmm. yeah so uh i want to play a couple pieces and this will be in the show notes but uh reason on the 12th august 12th put out a video Kamala Harris, drug warrior, vice cop, draconian prosecutor. It, it kind of uh, highlights some of this uh, viewpoint that is is schizophrenic. So let me pull this up so everybody can see it. Harris's political rise has been propelled by a years-long, high-profile campaign against alleged sex traffickers. What she's actually done is throw women in jail for having consensual sex while trampling on the rule of law to advance her own political ambitions. Ignoring the pleas of sex workers and human rights advocates for over a decade, she's fought against campaigns to decriminalize consensual adult prostitution in California. As attorney general, she created a statewide program to get truckers to report suspected sex workers to police. These policies didn't stop traffickers, but they did land plenty of sex workers behind bars. One of the greatest offenders is Backpage.com. Harris fought to destroy Backpage.com, a classified site that sex workers use to find and screen their clients, even though she publicly admitted that the site's founders, Michael Lacey and James Larkin, were protected from prosecution under federal free speech laws. But tonight, a groundbreaking arrest. But a month before election day in her Senate race, Harris went ahead and had them arrested anyway, parading them before the cameras on pimping charges, which were then promptly dismissed by a judge. When Harris got to Congress, she kept up her crusade, becoming a big proponent of the 2018 law known as SESTA-FOSTA. One cannot cowardly sit behind a computer committing their crime. Quite the contrary. The result was that many sex workers had no choice but to return to the streets, where soliciting clients is considerably more dangerous. It's because you don't know who's going to pick you up. There's more pimps and there's more guys out here. Meanwhile, Harris declined to intervene in a real underage sex trafficking scandal that involved dozens of police and other local authorities in the Bay Area. Okay, so, (laughs) I mean, it's, you know, again, it's, it's, say one thing, do another. A lot like Joe Biden's record, they're really made for each other. Uh, they, they really are both 
you know, saying that their record says one thing and now they say they're against what they did forever. Right. And, and, and looking at the current race. So if we look at the Democrats and Republicans in the presidential race, all four of them are exactly like that. Yeah, for sure. Just, I mean, there's, there's the old joke about Trump where there's always a tweet where he completely contradicts himself uh, from years earlier from what he's saying now. And, you know, and we all know, you know, we all know uh, Pence very well, but yeah, but, Biden, like just, just whatever it takes to get uh, to get the power, whatever it takes to get elected, whatever, whatever it needs to do. Like when she, you said she was trying to be the progressive. She saw that the, the, the wind was blowing to where the, the centrist was going to probably win the nomination. So she tried to re- correct and go back into being a centrist side uh, on, on the Democrats. So, yeah, whatever it takes to win. Exactly. Is what right. it is. Yeah. And when you when, when we were talking about the things that she didn't do or she she didn't go after the the scandal and the cops with that, doesn't she also uh, turn her you know turn a blind eye to the church molestation issues that were going on at the time? I have not heard that. Okay. So um, I, I I'd heard that and I I need to research it more. It's then, one of those things you that was on a there, podcast but, and then you're like, yeah, that's true. I, I read it, but it was like I need to I need to read to make sure that it's founded in a little bit more than than just where i read it at i imagine so 